Hey everyone! Welcome to Family Storytime. I'm Dan, and today all of our stories are about magic. <laughs> Have you ever seen someone do a magic trick before? Maybe you've seen someone do a cool trick with a deck of cards? Or maybe you've seen someone make something vanish into thin air? Or maybe you've even seen someone pull a rabbit out of a hat. Abracadabra. Well, we're going to see all of those things and more in today's stories. So let's get started. Our first story today is Marigold Finds the Magic Words by Mike Marlborough. Marigold hosted the best parties. He planned well in advance, baked himself a very impressive birthday cake, and always had something up his sleeve. His guests expected nothing less. So, when everyone gathered for Marigold's birthday, they were ready for something exciting, something extraordinary, something magical. Marigold had practiced for months, learning all the tricks any magician should know. With a snap of his fuzzy paw, he could turn a handkerchief into a magic wand. Or, with a few frisky flourishes, turn one rainbow ring into many, many more. One trick, however, was Marigold's favorite. It was sure to dazzle and amaze, and it was perfect for a puss who liked everything just so. Marigold loved to make things vanish, vamoose, and disappear? For some reason, the trick wasn't working. Mr. Finch, Marigold said, what are you doing here? Mr. Finch did not reply. Marigold realized he had forgotten the magic words. Scrambled eggs, blackbird pie, Mr. Finchy, go bye-bye. Marigold's guests were delighted. They thought the magic act was funny. But Marigold was miffed. He trapped Mr. Finch in his box and tried some more magic words. Roasted quail and chicken soup make this meddler fly the coop. But when Marigold lifted the lid to take a peek, Out popped a pair of prancing pigeons. His audience giggled and guffawed. That means they laughed pretty hard. Marigold quickly crammed the birds into the credenza. Chocolate-covered finches, pigeons on sticks, unwanted interlopers hit the bricks. Do you think this magic trick will work? Marigold carefully opened the doors. Three sequined seagulls, he said. Oh no! His friends roared with laughter. I think he's getting a little embarrassed. Marigold howled. That's not right! He corralled the cockamamie critters into his vanishing cabinet and gathered himself for one final try. These magic words had better be the right ones. Marigold raised his magic wand and commanded, Vanish, vamoose, disappear, and poof. Something disappeared, all right. <laughs> Marigold's friends rose to their feet and erupted in applause. But Marigold was angry enough to bring the house down. Stop all your clapping, he cried, clawing down the curtains. Stop all your flapping, he yelled as he leapt onto the lights. This is my stage, my show, my birthday, and I want everyone to disappear, please. Oh no, he's having a tantrum. Oh, poor Marigold. And they did. Wow, I must be the best magician ever to pull off a great trick like that, Marigold thought, trying to catch his breath. All of his friends disappeared.
He looked at the empty room. He looked at his magnificent birthday cake and decided that celebrations weren't much without anyone to share them with. So he slobbered out some simple words. Th thank you for coming to my party and please come back. And he hoped they were magic enough to bring his friends back. They were. Aww. Surprise! Oh no, all the birds are back, even some more. Oh wow, quite an end to Marigold's birthday party, wouldn't you say? <laughs> well, that's one magic show that went pretty wrong. Let's now go to another magical land and see what happens there. Well, things didn't work out too well for Marigold, did they? But let's see how they go for our next storybook characters in Super Happy Magic Forest by Maddie Long. This story begins in the Super Happy Magic Forest, where everybody enjoys picnics, fun, and dancing all year round. This is all because of the mystical crystals of life. Looks like a pretty cool place, doesn't it? But the forces of evil were at work. One day, the mystical crystals of life were stolen. Oh my goodness. Why? Old Oak, the wisest in all of the super happy magic forest, called an urgent meeting. This is the work of the goblins. Who here is brave enough to journey to the goblin tower, bring back the crystals, and save us all? Five heroes were chosen. Everybody agreed that they were the bravest warriors in all the land. There was Hoofius, Herbert, Twinkle, Blossom, and Trevor. Do we have to go? With barely enough time to pack a lunch, the heroes began their epic quest. Do you think we'll ever see them again? <laughs> no chance. They adventured through frozen lands and faced scary and terrible creatures. What amazing views. Slow down. I can't. Fall back. Fairy dust for everyone. Ow, oh, it burns, it burns. Okay, who took my frying pan? None shall pass. Send in more penguins. I don't think that's going to work, sir. Whee! They showed great courage in the face of grave danger. Super creepy haunted forest. No picnics. The guidebook says to look out for the rare three-eyed owl. Great Uncle Maurice, fancy seeing you here. I've never seen magic stones like these before. Did anyone bring bug spray? There is no escape. Ah, a slug. They escaped from dungeons that tested their skills to the very limit. What an interesting rock. Did anyone find the dungeon key? I'm gonna struggle with this. It's a trap! But they look so tasty! The hero stopped for a picnic, but they were attacked. Not bees! They decided to pack up and continue their epic quest to Goblin Tower. Are you okay, Trevor? I can't feel my legs. Almost have it. Fascinating. I think we took a wrong turn. This is handy. At last, our heroes arrived at the very doorstep of Evil, Goblin Tower. The fate of the super happy magic forest was in their hands and hooves. Here we are, number 13 Doom Mountain Lane. Is everybody ready? 
Where are the crystals? Crystals? We only have tea and cookies here. Well, this is unexpected. I can't find my lucky pink teapot. Visitors to my tea party, how splendid. Please come in, there are plenty of ginger snaps for everyone. I've seen cream puffs this big. Uh, hey, strawberry shortcake, anyone? I dunked my cookie in too long. The quest was over, but then our heroes received important news. The goblins didn't have the crystals. We have failed the quest. There will be no more super happy magic forest for anyone. At last, I have caught up with you. You must all return to super happy magic forest. There is great evil. Your quest is not over. Dennis, no! We must return. But how will we get back in time? Faster Blossom! Do you think they'll make it back in time? They return to the super happy magic forest where the true evil revealed himself. We're all doomed! He's gone mad with power! <laughs> I stole the crystals, and with the heroes off on a wild goose chase, I'm going to sell them all and buy a speedboat. <laughs> uh, what's a speedboat? Is everybody ready? One, two, three. Old Oak, you are the root of evil. We know what to do with you. No, not my roots. Is everybody ready? Wow, that's a lot of butterflies. Put me down at once. They've entered our airspace, sir. Shall we send in the penguin copters? Prepare to land. No, not here. With the return of the heroes, evil old Oak was put in his rightful place the super creepy haunted forest. I shall have my revenge. <laughs> we will haunt you forever. And with the quest completed, there was only one thing left to do. Party! Now that looks like a great time. <laughs> and that's the end of Super Happy Magic Forest. Now at the end of that tale, we saw a bunch of butterflies come to the rescue of our heroes, didn't we? We have a butterfly downstairs in our aquarium, and it's called the Copper Band Butterfly. So let's go down and learn more about that fish. Hey everybody, it's Taylor with the Marathon County Public Library and I'm here today for the Aquarium Corner. So normally when you think of butterflies, they fly, but we have a fish in our aquarium called a copper band butterfly. So let's head on down and learn more about this fish. This is the copper band butterfly fish. It's known for having four vertical yellow stripes on the side of its body and for its long snout and small mouth. They also have a small black dot on each side of their body, which ward off predators by tricking them into thinking they're big eyes. In the wild, these fish generally live along coral reefs and rocky shorelines in the Indian and Pacific Oceans, including around Australia, Japan, Myanmar, Malaysia, and other countries. They usually swim alone or in pairs and don't like being part of a large group due to their territorial nature. These fish are mainly carnivores, meaning they eat meat. In the wild, they'll eat tube worms, small crustaceans, clams, and mollusks. Their long skinny snout helps them find food in narrow cracks and crevices that other fish can't access. Copper band butterflies can grow eight inches in length and generally live about 10 years. Thanks for joining me today for the Aquarium Corner. 
Now let's head back and hear one last story. Our last magical story of the day is Keith the Cat with the Magic Hat by Sue Hendra. Keith the Cat was merrily minding his own business when... <laughs> Keith's got ice cream stuck on his head, chuckled the other cats. <laughs> Suddenly, Keith felt a little bit shy and a little bit silly. It's not ice cream, he squeaked. It's, uh... It's, uh... It's, uh... It's a magic hat. Yes, that's it. A magic hat. This made the other cats laugh even louder. <laughs> Go on then, show us some of your magic, they chortled. Poor Keith, what was he going to do? Well, well, first, he stammered, I need my magic wand. He reached for the chocolate magic wand on the ground, but... It started to run away all by itself. The cats were amazed. Wow, Keith, you made it move, they gasped. Keith was amazed too, but he didn't say anything. More, the cats cried excitedly. More magic, more, more, more. Keith took a deep breath. Then he waved his wand around. Abracadabra, but nothing happened. So Keith tried again. Alakazoo, still nothing happened. And the cats were getting impatient. They chanted and stomped their feet. More, more, more. Wizzy woo doo cried Keith and... Just then, a whole family of rabbits popped up out of the ground. They'd never heard such a noise before. Keith, you did it! The other cats cheered. You magicked up some rabbits! Hooray! They were all having such a fun time that they didn't hear a distant woof. A dog! Quick, Keith, save us with your magic! The cats squealed in panic. But of course, Keith couldn't really do magic. So what was he going to do? The cats ran up the tree. They looked down at the barking dog. Quick, Keith, do something! They cried. Then... Whoops! Keith's magic hat slipped off his head. It was falling quickly through the air. Plop! Oh no, your magic hat, cried the cats. Now you'll never be able to make the dog disappear. Keith felt terrible. It's not a magic hat, he admitted sadly. You were right all along. It's just ice cream, and now we're stuck up in this tree forever. I'm sorry. But then... Buzz. Hooray for Keith, cried the cats. You're magic even without your hat. Thank you, said Keith shyly. And for my next trick, I will make this blob of ice cream on the end of my nose disappear. The cats waited patiently, and then... <laughs> Keith stuck out his tongue and licked it off. And that is the end of Keith the Cat with the Magic Hat. Well, I hope you enjoyed all of our magical tales today. And for my last trick, I'm going to make myself disappear. So until next time, bye-bye.